touch the dogs. <laughs> Bit of all you in. Come, come. Bit of all. We need to talk about humidity. <laughs> humidity. <laughs> First movement, I should have tapped my shoes a little bit further out, but let's start from the beginning. Humidity <laughs> pillow. <laughs> it's about time we do a video on humidity. It's about time. And I think you will be uh, staying with us for a little while because there's some, some stuff to, to be said. And uh, so uh, every year it reacts to humidity differently, but the Mongolian gear comes from a country that's very dry. So humidity is not exactly an issue. The, the year is just covered with felt and a, and a canvas. Uh, they're cooking. Uh, the, the entire day there is usually a fire with something cooking. The tone is always open. That humidity goes through the tonal. Humidity is just not an issue. Actually, if it rains, which is rare, and they might have some humidity, humidity spots, they, they don't care too, too, too much. Here, uh, people have other expectations. A little higher standards, maybe, uh, that were... It's different standards, not higher. Different. This is true. Yes. This is true. So, um, yes, we've started using yurts, gears, in a much, in much different climates, all, all around in Europe, uh, here in North America, in some very uh, uh, wet places, like uh, the, the, the west, islands. West coast of BC, the Gulf Islands, from Alaska to Texas, Maine... New We've Hampshire. got here, it's, uh, yeah, uh, on, uh, on the east coast in uh, Newfoundland, uh, in in Nova Scotia. So how wet does it get? <laughs> it gets wet. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's it's a uh, submarine yurt. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyways, um, so um, especially with people living in those yurts in uh, in a cold climate, in particular, we started to really face humidity issues, and and it took us. A few years to really understand, and and how do we understand it completely? No, not. But we've certainly made a lot of progress. Um, so, so now, uh, in winter or, or any time, if humidity is produced, where where does it go? Uh, it goes up mostly, uh, or through a hole. Any kind of leaks or holes uh, in the buildings. This is how uh, almost all buildings uh, operate with humidity, uh, but. So oh, that's interesting. It it chooses the path of least resistance, Absolutely. like everything. Like everything, it uh, uh, moisture in the air always wants to go from warm to cool, and from wet to dry. This is the path that it wants to take always. That's uh, that's that's super important information already. Mm. Yes, path of least resistance, wet to cool. Uh, what was the other? <laughs> <laughs> from wet to dry. Wet to dry. Yeah. yeah. So warm to cool. Uh, humidity is a problem in every building that humans inhabit. This is not, you know, it's not unique to yurts. It, it is, um, it is a challenge for all builders. Um, so what what did we start doing at the beginning of my career? I said, well, a yurt, you, you can put this anywhere. It'll be fine. It'll be perfect. And I probably I wasn't lying because I just didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know better. But yes, we we started to realize that the canvas that we're using have those beautiful breathing quality, and they breathe. They let humidity go. However, they're not water uh, proof. They're water resistant. They will take the water until a certain level, and then they might leak. Also, especially if they're old or, or etc. So we started putting house wrap between the felt and the, the outer layer, which is not how house wrap is de designed to be. Normally it would be on the, it should be on the warm side. Just the way the yurt is made, this is the best compromise we found. And the house wrap is a compromise. It will still allow this yurt to, to breathe or to let some vapor go out while keeping any excess of humidity coming from outside in, outside of the shell. Now, a compromise, it does reduce this, this breathability. And what we've realized especially, especially is the, the limit is especially in winter, mostly in colder climate or a change of, change of seasons. But in winter, we do what's normal and we try to keep everything closed up. We close our doors, we close our osh, we close because we don't want to let uh, the heat out. Yeah, 
And that, that's the first mistake. Mm -hmm. We path of least resistance, we need to allow this humidity to escape. So yes, the house wrap allows as long as it's not blocked by either water Ice. or frost or, 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 or snow. So cranking the tono up is, is one of the first solutions. We need to leave a chance for that humidity to, to escape. Yeah, absolutely. It's crack a door, mm -hmm. crack a window, but your best solution is always going to be open the top, open the tunnel. The warm air is going to rise. It's going to use the natural effect of, of rising air to take that warm, moist air out of the earth. There you go. But it's, uh, it's often in winter is the time when we get the, the first uh, cold snap, the first heating season is when we get the phone calls of uh, people noticing moisture. In, and it's, in, in, it's often at, at the end of the roof where, where there's a, a, a connection point where basically that humidity is followed the, the slope of the roof and ended up at, at pressure points. So it can be at different spots depending how the felt, how dense the felt is. But there is one, one big thing, or above the doors, or above the windows, where that humidity cannot go any further. Yeah, it, it seems to uh, present itself in random spots, but often near the, the tops of the walls, or not far off. And it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's concerning when you see it, you think, oh, my urine has a sprung a leak. Yeah. <laughs> my so first reaction, and that's what, what we thought, yeah. first reaction was that, that this water is coming from outside. But no, the water is, is, is the water from the inside that just hasn't had a chance to get out yet. So if your canvas is in fairly good condition, if your house wrap is in good condition, if there's not a hole that's been, spo that's been poked by a, a branch or, or by an angry bird or, or, a, or a happy squirrel, uh, all of the above, if, if the, 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 the envelope is fairly intact, there shouldn't be water coming in. So there's more likely, if you have any humidity, more likely it's a, it's a question of humidity. Yep. And it's very impressive how this can happen. We've had uh, uh, numerous examples, so, so, some quite spectacular. Uh, I'm thinking, of course, of, uh, of Michael, um, Mikhail in the Yukon. Mm. He lives in a seven wall yurt with very young kids. He's actually even raised the, the, his yurt's walls. So, now comes winter, the air is dry. So the kids, you know, so you need a certain humidity for, uh, for the kiddos. So he starts uh, putting wet blankets. He starts even, even putting uh, kettles of, of water to, to, to moist that air. A catastrophe, <laughs> what does happen? The, the, so that water is just going right into the felt and it's staying there and it's, it's and, freezing. And the felt is beautiful because yeah. the felt takes it has this capacity of taking some of the humidity and giving it back later, but to a certain extent. Yes, it has its limits. So the, our, your felt, this beautiful felt, will hold 30% of its, its uh, weight in moisture content, which uh, if you remember lifting those felts up when you did your setup, it's... Don't it, do it, it when they're wet. <laughs> it, can, it can add a lot of uh, moisture into, uh, into your felt. So, um, and particularly using a wood burning stove uh, in your yurt, we recommend this. It produces a great heat to help dry the yurt out. But another thing that it's doing is it's helping to take that humidity and moisture away. Yeah, uh, um, a, a good wood burning stove is definitely the, the, the best solution so far. It gives this, this strong heat. So if, if ever your yurt becomes wet for whatever reason, you've left the tone open or you indeed got it so, so humid that it's, it's damp or you've got spots, a good fire for a few hours and make sure to crank the tone open. Make sure to ventilate while you do so. Yeah. So to, to get back to Mikhail, what happens with his felt? So the water would go through his double layer of felt, hit the cold house wrap, and freeze and accumulate. And then in the spring, when it thawed, when everything got to temperature, he basically had a flood. A flood. <laughs> an <laughs> inside a, flood. An inside flood because mm. of the way he had actually built uh, his, uh, his little pony walls. That water went and came inside the yurt. Mm. Catastrophe. It was, it was really uh, a poor sight. So, uh, Michael actually kind of prompted us to, to try a new house wrap, which we did now four, three years ago. Yeah. 
three years ago. So we, we did a, a little trial with four different house wraps um, in four quarters on top of a smaller yurt and by minus uh, 20 Celsius Fahrenheit. Minus uh, very zero. Cool. <laughs> zero. <laughs> uh, uh, we boiled water for over the course of three days. We boiled 100 liters of water and, and all that water went through the roof. And what did we discover? One, one house wrap is not quite like the same as another house wrap. They, they are not created equal. And uh, uh, so there, there's definitely a benefit to a house wrap that has uh, an increased breathability. It's, it's really the, the ability to allow moisture to pass through. And we found one. And actually that one helped the other. So three of the house wrap were really were quite frozen, but not as badly as it would have been in another year. That meant that actually the fourth quarter of house wrap let enough humidity out. Now, it was clear that we had kept the roof very clean. Huh? So if you have, that's why we recommend getting the, the snow off the roof, because that snow will block the breathing. Also, it will be water that melts and, and blocks the pores of the house wrap. That's at least what we're thinking. This, this, is, uh, this is one of the, the problems uh, that, that can happen with house wrap is, is that moisture is, is freezing and it's not uh, able to pass through as well uh, as, 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 it, as it normally does. So there is limits to the house wrap. It is not a, a magical material. Uh, it's quite magical. But, but for, for what uh, is available, uh, this this is the the best we can find to keep your yurt uh, definitely the best compromise so, so the house wrap and a good house wrap uh some people put plastic yes it will work but over time we've just taken a year down who had used plastic so the, the plastic will keep the the yurt waterproof from the outside but it really limits that that ability for your your felt your canvas your your inner liner to breathe and so, this is like a human body. We always say it's a, a year is like a human body. It, it has to breathe. It has to live. It has to. So, so uh, yeah, to be happy. It has to be happy. It has to be happy. <laughs> and a, another interesting example, because we think winter, uh, it's not necessarily only in the winter. I'm mm -hmm. thinking of our friends in, in Washington state, uh, where that year it was, uh, was uh, doing absolutely happy. He actually was installed in one of the worst conditions in the middle of a forest. And mm. it's Washington State, it's almost rainforest. Um, however, it's, it's, it's lived in, so it's fine. Went through, uh, through the entire summer, beginning of the fall was absolutely fine. And suddenly a phone call. Uh, we've been, we had rain for now uh, a week or two weeks nonstop. Mm. And the year starts to leak. Mm. So uh, we were trying to think and I'm saying, well, of course, it sounds bizarre that that it would be a condensation problem. But I kind of stress and I said, you know, try to really heat. I'm not sure. Try this. Try that. Put an extra layer. We were still doubting our house wrap. So mm. I, th I told them, put an extra layer of a different house wrap on top in a certain area just to check, you know, and then dry this year up and and uh, and make sure and then he said ah oh. but actually during those two weeks there was a constant very small leak at the chimney mm. constantly so they, they they let it evaporate but over two weeks actually they were leaders and leaders and leaders of water that accumulated under that roof and the 30 percent weight was, was 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 then over so that 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 year started to leak inside and it was not specially war, uh, especially cold, but it was colder outside. Mm. And I suspect also that the rain has kind of blocked the pores of that house wrap. So this is a, this is a concept called the dew point, <laughs> which is the point at which the moisture in the air uh, is, is warm and it hits a cold surface. And it doesn't have to be zero. It can be, you know, there's a, there's a relationship between the uh, the cold air and the warm air, and then at which point water vapor turns to water. And I think this is also a, a classic example of the outside air cooling that internal moist air uh, and moisture back into, into its uh, water state. And That's just way too complicated. It leaks. <laughs> <laughs> it is complicated. It's, 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 it's so complicated that even all these building science guys 
still struggle with this. So it's, the it's, best is to start with ourselves. Absolutely. The, the best remedy this is, is to monitor the amount of humidity we're bringing, the snow on our uh, on our um, on our boots. Taking a shower in the year, well, <clears throat> take it cold. <laughs> and uh, no, you can't. Just think of ventilating, ventilate. Uh, drying wood. A customer of ours was drying his wood in the year next to the... And, and you were saying how much does the human body produce in, the, so in, a, in a day? About a liter and a half of water just from, from breathing. Three so, pints. And that's uh, if you have more than four people in a year, that uh, you, you multiply this. So... It's, uh... So now calculate the weight of the felt. <laughs> yes, <laughs> is how many days yeah. can you stay in a year okay. without ventilating? Yeah. We have a mantra: ventilate, ventilate, ventilate. ventilate. It's it's uh, you know, the year Again? naturally will do a, a, a natural draw. Ventilate, of, of, ventilate, of, ventilate of air through the top. Ventilate, uh, ventilate, 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 ventilate. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is the secret. And then if you really you end up with humidity spots, well, first of all, dry the yurt, crack something open, uh, open the door even, a good fire if you can. Uh, and then you can always spray those humidity spots if you have some with vinegar or, or bleach. They will disappear. Um, uh, we've seen, I've, I've seen people putting a, an air dryer in a yurt, yeah, right? It, 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 it's so working, you, but th there's nothing better than just simplicity. Simplicity. This is a simple dwelling. Treat it simpler, simple, simply. Know this phenomenon, and I think you'll be happy. Yeah, as long as you're aware that the phenomenon exists, you can deal with it. There you go. <laughs> I think that's enough. With a uh, plus, I, I'm out of tea. I have no tea left either. No tea. Yeah, ventilate, no. ventilate, ventilate, ventilate.